there's a man yep. who just got here. Ooh. Who not only did he play football in the SEC. Yep. Okay. This guy was a safety flying around. Oh, yeah. Hard but now hard. he runs a program that people are saying he's the new king of the mountain. It was always Bama, 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 Bama. Right. And then this guy got the reins down here in beautiful Athens, Georgia. And now he's the reigning, defending, undisputed national champion, back-to-back -back years, the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. What's up, fellas? How we doing? How we doing? Good. Coach. Yes, sir. It's great to be in your town. I want to let you know that. Thank you for having us here. The hospitality has been fantastic. And these fans have been barking all morning. <laughs> all morning. They, they said you know how to call the dogs now. Well, I heard I, you called them. So is it what or who at the beginning of that thing? Do you know? I don't know. What's that coming I mean, down the track? That's it. Is it who's that coming down the track? Who is it? They asked these guys. They did. It's torn. Yeah. Young say who, old say what. I think it is a little bit of a torn. I don't know. I can't. Remember. I can't believe you remember that and you know the words to that. Thank you. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Everybody says almost I'm... as impressive as you catching that kick in the national championship game back there, dude. I was like, who's that guy? Sign him. Oh, never mind. He's a kicker. Yeah. <laughs> See this, though, Kirby. <laughs> Coach. Let's talk about this. Back-to-back -back national champions. Yeah. Congratulations. Not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is bananas. Winning's hard, bro. It is, hard. especially with 18 to 23-year-olds. And now we know Stetson was a little bit older last year. But like any week, anything could happen in college football. I think that's what we're learning. Yeah. Now we're getting into the part of your schedule where I think all eyes are going to be on there. They say it's easy getting to this point. How do you feel about the judgment of the teams that you played? And what do you expect to learn from this new team, Carson Beck more specifically, in a game like what you have tomorrow? We'll find out a lot because we're playing a really good opponent. And um, I don't think Carson has much to prove anymore. I mean, Carson's a really good football player. His play has spoke for itself. He's uh, calm, cool, composed. He's been that way since he got here. So I'm not saying it's easy for him, but he understands what our offensive coordinator, what our offensive staff is trying to do with him. He handles that really well. And this team's been really resilient. So they have a lot of pressure on them, a lot of, uh, of everybody talking about the re three-peat and all this stuff. All they've done is focus on one game at a time. And that's the only thing that's put us in this situation we're in. Three-peat would be the first time since Minnesota in like 1929 or something. Yeah, I think. yeah we're not talking about that. We're trying to worry about Ole Miss. No, that, no, no. That's three what people peat. put on them. Well, you guys got to hype it up. You got to talk about Back. it. Back to back national champion. <laughs> Build it up. Yeah, man. <laughs> Can't lose a game. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Lane's loving it. Lane's loving that. Yeah. He, he's using that. I could imagine. Uh, let's talk about the college football playoff rankings. These come out, they matter, but every coach we've talked to says, does it matter now or does it matter at the end? You not being number one in all these polls, even though you are the reigning champs. Do you use that as motivation for the team? Because we've heard a couple of your speeches. Yeah. That feels like something that you could definitely draw from for the boys, and how have they responded? I haven't had to use it because we've had other motivation. I mean, we've had plenty of people doubting us each game we go into. You know, we've had a star player that's um, been out for a while in Brock. So it's like everybody's doubted us and given us motivation through that. The playoff rankings literally have not come across my desk. I don't care. I really don't think our team cares. They just want to get in the four. That's the goal, right? So it's not been about where you put us or what you say about us. We got to go out and do it on the field. And in the SEC, you got to do that every week, man. It's now, easy this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> According to everybody else. I, like I said, there's an open invitation. Call Greg Sankey, come down here and get you some of this SEC if you want it. <laughs> AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, what's it like coaching like with all this success? I've heard coaches say, like, hey, how we handle success will tell us a lot more because we know, I know how you handle adversity. And that's that's one of those things like now after reaching where you've reached like every single day how do you continue to preach that how do you continue to recruit guys that that want to be a part of that it's the hardest thing that i've had to do as a head coach i thought getting to be a head coach getting in front of the team making game made decisions was tough that's become much easier it's dealing with any success you have and i, I got to sit under you know the goat the greatest ever to do it and watch him deal with winning back to back and how you deal with that 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 part of your because it seeps in i tell our guys all the time the freshmen you inherited this you inherited this you didn't do anything to earn this 
You inherited it, and they don't understand that. They think, well, I'm entitled to this. I'm supposed to get this. I, I, I'm a winner automatically because I chose Georgia. No, you inherited what you got, a culture that a lot of the guys that created it are, well, half of them are Philadelphia, but other, <laughs> other, other, other than them, there, there's a bunch of them in the league. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's hard to sustain that. You do it with a bunch of guys that believe in the process that we have and the physicality we practice with and how hard we work. They, they really believe that's our, uh, that's our edge. You talk about Coach Saban being the GOAT and obviously working for him. We get a chance to chat with him every week. And this past week, you know, because they have Kentucky this week, and then they have Chattanooga, then they have Auburn. And he said he had to straighten out Miss Terry because she was already looking at Auburn. Let me tell you something. He ain't never straightened out Miss Terry. (laughs) (laughs) He can say what he wants. We know who the boss is over there now. Yeah, a lot of people told me Miss Terry was testing him, by the way, saying like, hey, we got Auburn at the end just to see if he was focused on Kentucky or not. But we asked him, I asked him, like, when you're Bama, Every team's going to give you your absolute best. Now you guys are the top of the mountain. So every week is a Super Bowl for every single team. Have you relayed that message to your players? And what is it like to get everybody's best shot, sell out every stadium you go to? You are the kings of the sport now. And it's kind of a different world, I would assume, for you and your team. Yeah, it's been a new place for us. It's not a place that we've been comfortable with. I mean, we just won our first one in forever two years ago, and uh, last year was kind of different. You know, it was like, oh, man, everybody's coming after us. No, 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 we're not doing that. We're hunting them. And we've kept that mentality of we're on the attack. I do think that our kids believe that we're going to win every game. And that, that, that belief system, sometimes I don't know that we had that four or five years ago that like, oh, no matter what, we're going to win this game in the fourth quarter. We had some struggles late in some games in the fourth quarter. Now, our guys believe in the fourth quarter they're going to win every game. So there's a give and take with everybody aiming at you. You know what I mean? Like, I feel good about it. Is uh, the reason because you've kept a gritty this? You know, we're eating off the floor. Always eating off the floor. <laughs> what, we're sweeping the sheds? <laughs> he knows it. Yeah. He's got it. So you try to keep a blue-collar mentality, it sounds like. What was it, Bloody Tuesday? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. We're still doing the same things we did before the National champions or has it gotten heightened a little bit no it's exactly the same i mean we want to keep that same work we actually go back and pick clips from the tuesdays of those years and say hey look at the standard they created watch this tuesday practice watch how they hit each other watch what they did and then two years later we're showing those clips that day of that practice the kids get jacked up they're like oh man look at jordan and nolan and uh, all these guys getting after it they love that big dudes by the way huge jordan jeez they've come into the men's league and just same they're still eating off the floor, man. <laughs> Sweeping the shit. Sweeping the shit. Yeah. Tone's got a question for yeah, you. Yeah, you reference guys like that. How different has this year been? You're breaking a new starting quarterback. Uh, Lad McConkey was out for, uh, for a decent amount of the year. Brock gets hurt. And then on defense, I think there's been like seven-ish first-round picks the last two years. And, uh, and I looked, and I, I don't know if there's any projected this year, maybe one. Has it been a different coaching experience this year with, uh, you know, the guys that have left the last year, two years, the talent that's left the last two years? Yeah, it's been real different. This team has been the most different. I felt like last year's and uh, the year before's had some similarities. This one's been like off the radar, completely different. We've had more injuries than we've ever had. We've lost two old linemen that were starters, lost several defensive players that have been starters. So it's been a weird dynamic. It's almost been a real resilient next man up kind of attitude and the schedule's been different. Um, so for, for our guys, I think difference has been good. Um, and they found a way in every game, and every game's kind of been its own little uh, history. Do you get confused why we don't talk about you? Huh? Like a game day. I get so confused. Why we don't talk about what, Georgia? Yeah. yeah you I, guys are the back to back national. I've asked this question numerous times. I'm like, are, so in the B's, maybe the C's, we just drop in there like, still back-to-back national champions, still undefeated, still doing their thing. And they always say, like, just wait. Just wait till the end of the year. Then it becomes, like, Georgia season. Do you ever think about how maybe you don't get enough credit? Not once. You? I mean, we, Oh, I'm not happy about it for you. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. But I, I, I certainly want that recognition for our players, but I don't want our players to seek that recognition. I want them to seek contact. I want them to seek uh, toughness. I want them to seek other things like being really present and being good in the now. All that stuff takes care of itself. And our guys have kind of believed that, hey, if we take care of what we're supposed to take care of, then we're going to get a chance to. We're, we're a very complimentary football team. We have good balance and we have really good special teams. We have offense and defense that complement each other. So they, they offset each other. And, you know, people don't talk about you. Sometimes that's a good thing. Well, yeah. I don't love it, though, because it's just easy for me to say, these dudes won yeah. two national. It's not easy to get to the top of the mountain mm-hmm. ever. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach. 
first, I've been saying a lot of terrible things about Georgia, so I apologize to you. It <laughs> has nothing to do with the football team. It's strictly Be careful a, out tonight. Believe me, when Pat said Bloody Tuesdays, I, I figured Bloody Friday might be around the corner <laughs> either way. But one of the things that we always hear that maybe you don't want to hear about is your pregame speeches. You know, yeah. earlier in the season, yes. you gave one at halftime, and you actually just predicted the second half to a T, and you guys went out and won, and then the national championship won, and some others have been kind of leaked. Is that something that pisses you off? Because that's kind of family business, if you will, with you and the team, but a lot of people are getting a chance to hear it. Yeah, uh, it pisses my mom off. I think she gets <laughs> okay. a little upset. She's a Southern Baptist woman, and she doesn't believe in some of that language I have. But uh, it, it, it makes, me, it makes me, me wonder like who's, who's listening and who's doing it because you, you want to be able to control the message in terms of what gets out and what doesn't. Uh, but there's some things that you've come to believe in college football you just have no control over. So it is what it is. And in, in the moment, I'm certainly not thinking about uh, what I'm saying in terms of leaking. Yeah. And I'm looking at it as, you know what, what can I do to inspire my players? Uh -huh. um, I was a passionate player and I want the players to have passion and energy about what they do hey that one we heard yeah it hits we learned a lot about you in about <laughs> that minute and a half yeah. all good from yeah, this yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know how mom felt about it but I want to let you know <laughs> this particular show we're like Kirby Smart is a dog. <laughs> we loved everything about it. Is that every game? You feel like no, you, you can't do it every game. I, I don't know that you can get to that point. You know, there's moments um, that you feel like you need that. You got to press the right buttons. A lot of times, our leaders do it, and when the leaders take over, they listen twice as much as they do listen to me. So when those guys take the floor and the players talk, you know how it is. Y'all are football players. You've been around it. When the players talk, they listen. And, uh, yeah, but what we heard from you is basically like this is what you want your program to be known about. Like, hey, we're gonna. This is who we are in uh, the Bloody Tuesday and this whole thing. And then your speeches, it's like you've built it the right way and it's continued to go. Massive respect from all of us. Ty has a question for you. Coach, when you look at your, you know, the current state of your program and kind of the rise in the transfer portal, when it comes to recruiting, have you had to change your philosophy at all? Because I assume, you know, like now you, you have the pick of the litter for anyone who's oh, coming in. Oh, good into dogs. Got yeah. it. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like your, you know, your depth chart. I'm sure you got five stars, you know, three, four deep. But do you have to worry at all about, like, coaching guys different ways with, you know, kids so quick to, hey, I'm not playing or, you know, I, I don't like my situation right now and worrying about them transfer, transferring out? Or has that not really impacted how you've went about recruiting and coaching? No, it's, it's, it's hard. It's much harder now in this environment because, we, first of all, I don't think anybody has – everybody thinks you have these lined-up five stars. They assume that. Yeah, it, you do. It, you don't. You don't. You actually don't. But you, what you do is get blue-collar guys that want to be there because you really want to – like the, the kids we invest in, their freshman, sophomore year, I want them to be there the junior and senior year. So we're, we're, we look at a kid when we go to sign him, what's his portal risk? Is he a high portal risk? Mm. Because I, don't, I would rather invest all my practice reps in a guy that's going to be there and stick it out. Now, nobody can get that exactly right. Nobody's going to be 100%. But I would rather invest in people. A lad McConkie's a great example. He didn't play a snap his freshman year, but he was on the scout team, and he was killing people. And I said, this dude's going to be a player. Guess what? Lad McConkie was going to be so loyal to Georgia because he wanted to be at Georgia. It paid off in the long run to keep Lad McConkie in the organization, as opposed to maybe a guy that had a better high school tape, but he might have been gone after one year. So we're trying to get retention and be a little bit different. But we're not perfect. We have kids leave, and you know what? I'm not going to coach them any different. So the way I I coach I know that some kids are going to choose to leave that's fine if you choose to leave there's a thousand people wanting to come too so we're going to try to find the right fits for our program the transfer portal risk is that like a, a staff you have on your team that's like, like a grade yeah, yeah. Is that part of your recruiting that grade? it's portability risk it would be the coach recruiting him to say yeah. is everything going to be based on playing time because if it's truly based just on playing time you might not be happy right away so how are you going to deal with that? That guy's got a higher portability risk than a guy that's saying, hey, coach, look, I'm committed to the process. I know it might take me a year. It might take me two years to get on the field, but I'm committed to doing that. I don't have to have instant success. I want the kid that's willing to say that over the one that just asked me, am I going to play next year the whole time? You brought up Lad McConkey. Pretty perfect timing for him to come back with the Brock Bowers injury. Mm -hmm feels like. Now, I don't know if the football gods are blessing the dogs or not, but I've also heard maybe Brock ahead of schedule on everything. Maybe. <laughs> be, be, be real interesting. He's we haven't really there. seen your team full, right? I mean, we haven't really seen them at full go at this stage of the yeah, season. Yeah, because Lad's never really been full go. That's the hardest part. You know, Lad hasn't been out there completely healthy until, like you mentioned, uh, Brock's been gone. And, and I still don't know that Brock's completely healthy. You know, Brock's in a much better place to be able to go out and compete and be closer to going, and we'll find out uh, game time. But I'd like to have a full offensive line of our best offensive line and a full <laughs> – I'd like to have all of them. We just have dealt with more injuries, and I'm not 
not knocking that because a lot of teams that we've played over the years have had to deal with that same thing. Have you have to bring this up? You're in the SEC, so it doesn't affect you right now, but it certainly might later on. These sons of bitches are stealing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> hey, corner hey, stallions go. out there. No, everybody has a take on this, though. Yeah. Everybody literally has a take on this. We asked Coach Saban about it, and he said, all right, listen, we need to get the, the yeah. conversation just so this isn't even a convo. And I think the NCAA has ruled yep. that in bowl games and in playoffs, that'll be the case. They're moving that Why way. is it taking so long for that to happen? Do you agree that's the right time? And are you paying attention to everything that's taking place in this? Because maybe there might be a trickle-down effect to everybody in college football through it all. It's a lot of questions in one. I don't know which one to answer first. <laughs> answer I mean, all of them. Why <laughs> has it happened uh, uh, why has it not happened to this point? I've been on the rules committee, and it's easier said than done because you don't have the capability. Everybody, everybody's like, oh, yeah, you can. You can afford it. It's easy to do. In the SEC, yeah, that's real easy to do. But it's not easy to do in every conference, and it, you want to have competitive balance. So there's some conferences that might not have the capabilities to do the, in, in the, the pieces in the ear and do the things the NFL does. I would be for that because it would take a lot of headache off defensive coaches, offensive coaches, trying to do all this crazy stuff we do with signs and all these signals. It would make it much easier. But there would still be offenses that choose not to use the earpiece because they, want, they can't get word to their receivers. You only get one earpiece. So the receivers are over there, don't know what to do, and they're gonna still do the signs and signal to them and go really fast. So everybody should have a right to do what they wanna do. You shouldn't be mandated to do anything, but I do think the teams that are more traditional, like NFL offenses and NFL defenses, if that, if that makes the process cleaner and we don't have to deal with all this, I'd be all for that. It feels like that's kind of the feeling that every coach has. Like, we're kind of done yeah. hearing yeah. about this, dealing with let's move along. That's pretty much the same thing. I feel the same way. Like, I've never been a big try to get their signals because you're, you're across the field from them or, hey, they're getting our signals because people say all the time, well, they got our signal. That's, that's like a cop-out for a coach to me. They might have your signal. They still got a block to do. They still got to do all this stuff with the dude. <laughs> and, I, and, and every time I ever say, well, they're going to run this or they're going to run that, I'm like, dude, I'm worried about calling the game when I was a defense coordinator. I don't need somebody in my ear trying to tell me what they're doing before the play because it messes you up about half the time. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's something coming out today, allegedly. Yep. It's going to be loud. It has been loud, especially with how good Michigan has been. Right. Do you pay attention to the landscape of college football whenever you're going through the season? You said, hey, reach out to Greg Sankey. Come on down to SEC if yeah. you think it's so easy down here. A lot of good Pac-12 teams this good year. Pac really good quarterback play. When yeah. you look okay, so there. you have been paying attention. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dan and I are good friends landing in Oregon, so I've probably seen more of the Pac this year than I have in the past. Most of the time, I focus on the SEC box because you got to handle that before anything else. This year, they've had a lot more premier games, the quarterbacks, a lot of respect for Bo Nix from the SEC, who's played really well and done some great things, and they got really good quarterback play out there. They do. Coach, Lane Kiffin tomorrow. Ooh, my man Lane. <laughs> hey, he's doing hot yoga 6 a.m. I don't know if you heard about this. I just learned about this last week on College Game Day because his skin was radiating, uh, his hair looked good. He's living a whole new, different lifestyle. What are you seeing from this Ole Miss team that's either classic lane, new lane? What are you expecting to see tomorrow? Well, nothing held back, I could promise you that. Lane, is his team is never nervous or anxious. He has such an approach to the game. They take on his personality. You know, he has his personality of laissez fair, man, let's go. Here we go. Nobody's nervous. They're going to be playing wiffle ball before practice. They get out and get after it. His dog's running around. I mean, he, he talks about all the time staying loose. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite of that. So when you look at, when you look at this thing, <laughs> the, two, the two opposites, although we both have a lot of core beliefs of football the same, he, he is a very laid back, uh, loosey goosey, and throw caution to the wind uh, kind of coach. And I have a lot of respect for Lane. He's done an incredible job at Ole Miss, and we were really good friends when we were there at Alabama together. Hey, you seem laid back right now. Yeah, this has been cool. Well, this has been uh, this has been 24 hours out. I can still be a little relaxed. What does the next 24 hours look like? We have a crank up, man. We got a walk through. We're getting ready to go do it with our players. Um, we do about 60, 70 plays, walk through some situations, go to a movie tonight, catch a movie. And then, what are we watching? Ooh, I can't say that. That jinxed me because last time, oh. I, last time oh. I played a night game, I didn't say what we were watching. I ain't throwing it out there. It's a good one, though. Gladiator? No. 300? You going to a there. theater? Dumb and Dumber? No. Braveheart? Remember no. the Titans? Is it, new, is it a new release? I can't say because it'll mess it all up. <laughs> Somebody will come try to take a picture of Brock Bauer's foot if I say that. All right, all right. <laughs> you got it. Uh, Coach, we can't thank you enough. And before we let you go, Who's that coming down the track? Who's that coming down the track? It's the mean machine of the red and black. It's the mean machine of the red and black. 
there ain't nothing finer in land. He knows it. Than a drunk obnoxious Georgia fan. Than a drunk obnoxious Georgia fan. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. You better get Nolan to do that tomorrow. You need to get Nolan to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the national champion back-to-back head coach of Georgia. Thank you.